Hi! Welcome to my YouTube channel once again. My name is Isa, and today I will be discussing about, you know, the requirements for your K-1 visa interview that you need to prepare prior to your uh, interview at the U.S. Embassy. So, uh, yes, I hope that you all are doing good today and uh, <clears throat> it is my pleasure to be able to share with you guys uh, the requirements or, you know, um, and tips on how to get your uh, K-1 visa, um, you know, <clears throat> granted so yun uh, kailangan talaga uh, positive uh, mindset lang, lang tayo para and, and of course aside from being uh, from, from having a positive mindset we also need to prepare the uh, requirements you know as much as possible collect all the requirements that uh, you would possibly be required you know, so um, to start with, um, I discuss natin yung mga yung mga basic na requirements, sa kaya yung mga additional requirements that may be asked from you. So uh, I I actually I myself kasi medyo ano ako eh, medyo may pagka OC. So I want to make sure that you know like I have all the requirements that I needed before I pumunta for my uh, interview so um yung nangyari I what I did as my preparation uh, was I, I watch a lot of videos YouTube videos about k1 interviews their requirements the requirements that they were asked to show or something like that so it, it it's quite helpful to you know uh, gather more information as much as you can okay so to start with of course kailangan talaga you you have to complete your ds160 which is you know uh, if mo ito uh, online and then you have to make sure that all the information that were asked is correct i mean you you need to fill it up with correct information because uh, it will cause some delays or you know uh if hindi niyo ito na fill up ng maayo so yung pinaka importante po is ds160 na kailangan mo talaga fill up ng tama so how to fill up ds160 all you gotta do is do a lot of research watch videos on how to do it step by step okay and next is uh <clears throat> Ibi print out niyo yung confirmation page uh, kasi yun nga yung i-i-show niyo talaga before kayo makapasok sa uh, US Embassy uh, premises or sa building talaga nila. So you need the DS160 and then your uh, 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 yung alien registration uh, number. Ito yung makikita natin sa ano sa notice of action. So, yun parang inaas kasi yan dyan sa ano eh, yung ano mo, yung mga uh, alien registration mo, once na mag-fill up ka rin ng ano, ng uh, DS-160. So, next is of course your valid passport. So, make sure that your passport is ano pa, bago pa. Kasi pag 6 months, uh, yung, yung ano niya, yung uh, 6 months uh, before your expiration, parang ano na yun, mahihirapan ka na. So, yeah, hindi, um, and it will cause you, you know, like, uh, delays. Kasi kailangan mo magparinew. And then next is your NBI clearance. Kailangan, ano yun, updated, bago. So, I suggest that you get your NBI uh, one month before you were, um, your uh, K-1 visa interview. And then next is your police certificate. Because in my case, I worked abroad for um, almost you know, more than seven years, I should say. So, yun, kailangan ko talaga, uh, you know, like, kumuha ng police clearance. So, what I did is, ano, yung ginawa ko, uh, before ako umuwi ng Pilipinas, I decided to get my police clearance sa uh, bansa na kung saan ako nagtrabaho. So, it is, in fact, like, ang dami kong, I was 
quite nervous at that time kasi sabi nila baka daw expire, hindi tatanggapin. Pero yung sa akin po, more than one year na po siyang police clearance sa sa, sa Lebanon kung saan ako nang galing and and expire na siya, obviously. Wala hindi actually sa Lebanese police clearance, wala ka namang makitang ano um hindi wala ka naman makita yung expiration date pero of course it's more than one year and hindi na rin naman ako nakabalik doon so yun and then next is your senomar and of course kailangan din ito is uh, senomar should be you know like um, new so one month before your K-1 visa interview dyan kayo kumuha and then next is your evidence of financial support which is your affidavit of support which is a uh, form um uh, one, uh, three, four, I-134. So, yun. I yung fulfill up nito is your fiancé kasi siya yung uh, kung baga affidavit of support niya sa iyo na declare siya na so supportahan ka niya. And of course, dyan pinapakita yung uh, kailangan niya i-declare yung mga assets niya, yung uh, savings account and uh, you know, like uh, his assets. Na iba, just to prove to the US government that he indeed can afford to support you when you get here in the U.S. And the next is your income tax return form, uh, 1040. So, ito yung mga W-2s, dalhin nyo na lahat. Yung, um, what else, yung, yung ano niya, yung, uh, mga pay stubs. Usually, uh, yung mga, yung, yung alang ko lang or aware ako is usually they would ask a three months uh, pay stubs sa sa fiancé mo and at the same time the certificate of employment. So, the certificate of employment, i-declare doon kung ano yung salary niya and then yung projected annual income and uh, ila date, uh, day, I mean the day, uh, the day when he started his employment and yun. And of course, all his position in the company as well. So yun meron na kinu. I asked my fiance to forward it to me, lahat yon. And then, uh, yung uh, of course your two by two pictures. Pero ito uh, kinu kuha na ito. Uh, the, the, you were actually asked uh, four pieces of two by two pictures once na magano kana na mag medical. So hindi na kailangan. Hindi, you don't need to bring two by two pictures when you are already in the U.S. Embassy. Kasi yung St. Luke's na yung magpaprepare noon. Kasama na yun sa medical papers mo na inano nila na kinunsealed. And then next is your evidence of relationship. So ito po, ipapakita po natin sa inyo ang yung aking evidence of relationship which is very, very simple lang. I, I, ito, nilagay ko na sa folder kasi wala yung iba kasi may album-album talaga. True, true. So yung sa akin, I want to make it simple and of course, I want to save money as well. So yung, yung, yung very basic things that I put in here is yung mga hotel reservation, yung hotel receipt, uh, plane tickets, mga pictures together would important with the family kasi you know pag kayo, kayo lang dalawa parang ano yun parang hindi masyadong legit and then your chat logs call logs as much as possible uh, balik ka doon sa kung saan kayo nagpumpisa mag uh, uh, ano mag uh, usap and then uh, yeah tip kailangan talaga pictures with your family kasi i-ask din yan sa iyo sa CFO mo so i i, I have very few photos in here on my end so yun and um yeah as much as possible yung mga papers nyo is uh po photocopy so that you will have extra copies and then um yung updated letter of intent to marry ito yung letter na you know you have to declare that i uh to to once uh, intend to marry this guy you know, before 90 days, you know, something like that. So, yun lang naman yung uh, letter of intent to marry. Yung sa akin, it's, it was very simple. So, yun lang, sinabi ko lang doon na ako, I intend to marry uh, my fiancé um, before the end of the, uh, before 90 days. Something like that. Yun lang sinula. Tapos pinirmahan ko. Pinirmahan ng fiancé ko. Which is my husband now. And then yung date na pinirmahan niya. Actually, we already submitted one letter. Uh, um, intent, uh, letter of intent to marry sa USAIS. Nung nag-apply siya for petition. And uh, yung nangyari is. Uh, kasi gusto ko lang makasigurado talaga. Na baka i-ask ako ulit. So, gumawa kami ng bago. And then... Um, 
What else? Dinala ko rin yung mga uh, letter of eligibility from the U.S. Embassy. And then yung scan copy ng notice of action to yung kung saan na, na nakalagay na approve na yung petition uh, mo. And then your NVC letter. So, yun. Yung NVC letter from the NVC then. And uh, what else? Ano yung mga minimorize ko? Of course, my fiancé's number. Kasi yung iba, tinatanong talaga sila, you have to memorize the address of your fiancé. A complete address, number, uh, tsaka yung trabaho niya, anong trabaho niya, anong company. Kasi those are the questions that were asked to me. And then, uh, what else? Yung iba tinatanong, just like my sister, she was asked about uh, her husband's uh, sibling's name. So yun, i-memorize yun, yun as much as possible. And, and, yun, and yung mga narinig ko talaga ng mga kasamahan ko doon, pag divorce na yung fiancé nyo, mas maraming questions yun. So kailangan nyo i-memorize bakit sila na-divorce. I-memorize nyo yung mga pangalan ng mga anak niya if may mga anak siya. And then yung, yung as much as possible kasi you need to make sure or you need to prove to the uh, U.S. Consul that you indeed know the guy you are marrying with quite well. So yun nga. And then as much as possible, memorize the parent's name of, of your fiancé, lahat ng information sa kanya. Yung sa akin, minemorize ko, pati yung mga, uh, yung kurso niya nung college, yung year na nag-serve siya ng military, and yung, yung mga, ano niya, yung mga annual income niya, minemorize ko rin. So yun, it is better to be prepared than carry-carry uh, ka lang. Kasi pag tinanong ka, it might be a ground na, na madinay ka pag hindi mo alam. Kasi sasabihin nila, you don't know your fiancé well. Baka the relationship relationship between you and him is not real. So, yun. To avoid the suspicions na rin, ano na, it's better to be prepared. And then, um, yun na nga, kailangan, uh, yung tip ko lang siguro on how to pass the medical, I mean the uh, US visa interview is, to really be true with the information na binibigay mo. Kailangan you have to be truthful. You have to look at the US console, uh, console uh, eye to eye para at least malaman niya yung to totoo yung sinasabi mo, the yung genuity na sinasabi mo. And then um, what else? Uh, uh yun, tip 1, you need to be uh, you know sure and uh, genuine with your with your answers and then uh but uh, always, don't forget to, you know, like greet the, or, you know, greet the good morning, the U.S. Consul. Tapos, uh, ka, of course, kinakabahan tayo. So, try to make sure to calm down your ner nerves para naman makapag-focus ka when you were asked. Kasi minsan, I've seen one friend actually who, who were rattling like, like you know like very restless before her interview and um that fortunately naman she was able to pass but as much as possible it is it is better to stay calm i know that it is not easy to control the nerves but stay calm stay focused look at the u.s console eye to eye and uh, memorize everything about your fiance as much as you can so you uh night prior to your interview, i-memorize mo yun, basahin mo, isulat mo, just like I myself. I wrote down everything about her. Also, like kung may mga family kayo dito sa US, just like me, I have a sister, I have cousin here, I memorized the information about them, their numbers, their addresses. So that pag tinanong ka, in case tatanungin ka, you know what to, what to answer. And yun na nga. And, um, I hope na uh, so far kung may mga questions kayo, don't uh, don't be shy to comment below and ask me, you know. Uh, hope it is my pleasure to help you guys because I know the burden of this, you know, the perks of processing your US visa. So it, it's not easy, I should say. It's quite stressful. So feel free to ask me questions below and then don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I will have more videos about my K1 visa journey and of course, yung tip ko rin pagdating ko sa US, yung port of entry would be my next video, okay? The preparations that I made uh, sa, sa pagbiyahe ko dito sa US. So, I hope you guys will have a good uh, day today and God bless you all and I hope that your, your visa... Um, applications will be granted to us para naman ano uh 
wala, chill chill lang, makapag-asawa na and uh, of course, you can uh, start your uh, married life here in the US na rin, okay? So, please, uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment below and uh, I will have more videos coming for, uh, again, for my port of entry here in the US. God bless you all and have a great day.